This is Gift Biz Unwrapped, episode 96. They all have a character, a personality that I just love to see when people look at them and a smile comes on their face. Hi, this is John Lee Dumas of Entrepreneur on Fire, and you're listening to Gift Biz Unwrapped, and now it's time to light it up. Welcome to Gift Biz Unwrapped, your source for industry-specific insights and advice to develop and grow your business. And now, here's your host, Sue Monheit. Before we get into the show, I have a question for you. Do you know that you should be out networking, but you just can't get yourself to do it because it's scary? Are you afraid that you might walk into the room and not know anybody? Or that you're going to freeze when you get up to do that infamous elevator speech where you talk about yourself and your business? Well, I'm here to tell you that it doesn't need to be scary if you know what to do. To help you with this, I would like to offer you a coffee chat. For the price of buying me a cup of coffee, we can sit down and I'll tell you everything that I know about networking and how I have personally built two multi-six-figure businesses, primarily through networking. To learn more about this opportunity, just go over to bit.ly forward slash network ninja. That's B-I-T dot L-Y network ninja. And now let's move on to the show. Hi there, it's Sue and welcome to the Gift Biz Unwrapped podcast. Whether you own a brick and mortar shop, sell online or are just getting started, you'll discover new insight to gain traction and to grow your business. And today we have joining us Teresa Curlyberg of Bear Creek Design and Felting. Bear Creek runs through the pasture of Jeff and Teresa's property in North Dakota. They raise sheep, cattle, and chickens. It's the sheep from her property that provide the wool for Teresa's business, Bear Creek Design and Felting. Teresa's been selling her one-of-a-kind needle felted art online since 2006. Two years later, she opened her Etsy shop. And as her business continues to evolve, Teresa has designed several beginner and advanced needle felting kits so others can learn her techniques and enjoy her craft as well. Welcome to the show, Teresa. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Loving that you're here. And we're going to just dive right in to your motivational candle. As our listeners know, we like to get to know our guests in a little bit of a different way. And learning about your candle is a wonderful way for us to do that. So if you were to describe your ideal motivational candle, what color would it be? And what would be the quote? The color of my candle would be green. I like natural colors like brown and greens. The quote would be be the reason someone smiles today. My sculptures that I make, they all have a character, a personality that I just love to see when people look at them and a smile comes on their face. Beautiful. And I think as crafters, that's such a great satisfaction that when you get a response like that, a happy smile, people come up and say, oh, that's so beautiful, or just make someone happy. I think that's the reason deep down for all of us who are creators, why we do this in the first place. Yes, I definitely agree. Gift Biz listeners, I saw Teresa's booth at the Chicago One of a Kind show. And her product is so adorable. I'm going to have you describe it first, Teresa, before we get into exactly how your story started. Just give us a little description of your product. Okay, I make a needle felted sculptures. They're made out of 100% wool from our sheep. They're solid wool all the way through. I make whimsical characters as snowmen and realistic animals, such as elk and elephants and giraffes. They all have their own personality. Even the realistic sculptures have a grin or a look about them that will make you smile. I also have designed needle felting kits. They have the wool from our sheep Uh, inside them. They have instructions with pictures and everything that you need to complete these projects. And they're all designed with the beginner in mind. So if you've never heard of felting before, you would be able to complete the projects. All right, so that gives you a little bit of an idea, but you're going to have to go over and look at these, and we'll talk about websites and all of that later, because they are so cute. And Teresa, it's interesting to me that you call them sculptures. (laughs) Yes. Initially, I thought of them as, you know, they're little cute stuffed animals, but 
there's a lot of detail in them. Explain where you got the sculpture as a description. A lot of people do look at them and think that they were like a stuffed animal, but they're actually a sculpture and that I start with just wool roving, just a fluff of roving, and I stab it with the felting needle. And as you stab it with the felting needle, it pulls the wool into itself and it makes it harder and harder. So once you have a basic shape, then you just keep adding wool and poking it on with the felting needle. And so you are sculpting your way out. And I just look at pictures of live animals or I get some of the ideas out of my own imagination. Now, I'm not very familiar with this craft, but is this your own technique? Is this a technique you've created? No, it isn't. It's a very popular right now, actually. There's a lot of people doing it. All right, but not like you. <laughs> 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 All right, so take us back. How did you decide to get into this in the first place? Well, it all it came about slowly. I've always been a stay-at-home mom, um, homeschooling my, my children. And my husband has had to work overtime and extra jobs to provide for the family. And so I always was looking for a way to earn an extra income. I wasn't sure what that was going to be. And the way it came about is... There's many events leading up to it, and they all just come together perfectly. My daughter, when she was seven years old, was interested in learning how to knit. When my kids are interested in something like that and like homeschooling, I like to just jump in and, and help them in any way I can. So we learned how to knit together. We began knitting. Even the boys were knitting. We were really excited about what we were making. And then we kind of got excited about wool, yarn, and, how, and the whole process of spinning it ourselves. And we thought that would be fun. We looked into it a little bit, and on my daughter's eighth birthday, she asked for a lamb. And secretly, I kind of wanted some sheep myself, so she maybe knew that. I don't know, but she ended up getting two lambs, and I got two lambs as well. And that was the beginning. That's where it all started. We started to look into what we were going to do with their wool. We picked a Romney breed that is known for their quality wool, and we joined a local group that calls themselves the Woolly Women, they used to raise sheep or they'd still raise sheep and they do things with their wool, such as spinning, felting, you name it, anything you can do with wool. And we joined this group. And the first time we were there, I was learning how to spin the wool into yarn. And my daughter was uh, shown how to needle felt. And when she went to bed that night, when we got home, I picked up the needles and started playing. And I stayed up till three in the morning making a sheep. After that, we would go demonstrate we would spin and with the woolly women at local events. And people were interested in purchasing the things that I had made. And so I just started to think, um, you know, I was amazed that they wanted to purchase them. And it was kind of exciting. I'd always known somewhere in the back of my mind that selling online was the only way I was going to possibly make money where we are. We're located on a farm 30 miles from any small town. <laughs> so it makes it difficult to have like a store or anything like that. So I kind of knew online was where I had to go. So I started looking into eBay is where I began. I put some of my sculptures on eBay and we were all excited to watch the, the bids come in and were amazed at how much that they would bring. And eventually I found out about Etsy. And in 2008, I opened an Etsy shop and I sold my sculptures there. I sold wool roving to other needle felters in my shop. I was asked locally for local 4-H groups and things to teach classes on needle felting. And so I started doing that. And then my customers and, and on Etsy or on social media began to show an interest in learning how I do what I do. And so I thought, well, maybe I could take these classes and put them into a kit, write some instructions and pictures and be able to help people learn it all across the country. That's when I started with a bear kit and I've moved up to 13 kits I have now of different levels. There's beginner and then advanced beginner as well. You have just walked through the evolution of a business in such a fabulous way and it's so interesting because really what you're saying is you really didn't have an end goal in mind. It's just one step led to another led to another. It was your daughter being interested in lambs and then you doing it more of just a home craft and then you went local, saw people were interested in what you were doing and would actually 
buy it, right? So mm-hmm. you were checking to ensure that there was a market there, but you weren't even looking for that at that time. Then it jumps over to eBay, Etsy, then it jumps to classes, and then it jumps to kids, just one step after another. And I want to just underscore this, Gift Biz listeners. You may not know exactly where you're going, but being open to the opportunities along the way is exactly what Teresa did. And Honestly, this isn't something you would have been able to do even probably 15, certainly 20 years ago because the online presence wasn't even available yet. So how fortunate are we to be able to live here now? (laughs) I know. It it all happened at the perfect time. Absolutely. (laughs) So, all right. So now you're online selling kits. I know you're also out at shows. Is there anything more we should know about the business kind of as a whole before we move on? I do online classes as well. That is something I started a couple years ago. I'm trying to get in to more of the difficult things where I could show in movies how to do things. That's been one of the things I've done recently. Do you charge for those classes? I do. Okay, wonderful. And that's, uh, that's so nice because you can do it right from home. Do you still have children at home that you're still homeschooling? I do. I have two. They're 14 and 16 years old. Okay, so this is something you can still be at home watching them because those teenagers can be trouble. (laughs) (laughs) Definitely. (laughs) And still progress your business online. That's fabulous. Talk to us a little bit more about the online classes. How are you producing those and getting them up? And just give us a little feel for how that all got started and how it's evolved. Well, it started because there's a lot of things that you can't put into the kits. And that's why the kits are mainly beginner. They're easy. Most anybody can do them. Where there is interest out there in learning like more techniques, like the details that I get in the animals and how to do them. And so I knew it had to be movies of me actually doing it to show them. And so I put together the videos myself and I attempted to <laughs> to organize it into classes and get it on my website. But I, in the end, had to ask for extra help from Ultimate WordPress Help is where I've gotten my help for that, and they've put that together for me. Tell me what that is. I'm not familiar with that. Ultimate WordPress Help, what is that? She calls herself a site savior. So if you don't, like a business like mine, where you want to do what you do and you don't want to waste your time working on your website and all the technicalities that are involved, I have a year... I go by yearly annual membership, and um, she's there for any trouble I have. Something's not working right on, on my website. She's there within minutes, usually, to help me. And she also will do website design and like theme changes and site customizations and technical fixes where you don't want to waste your time. Where for up until that point, I was spending hours watching videos <laughs> and trying to do it all myself and. This is just, yeah, it has helped me quite a bit. I think it's something that we all struggle with as entrepreneurs is that we want to be able to do everything ourselves. And a lot of people will get to a point like you, I guess, were with videos that you knew you wanted to accomplish something and you got to a certain point because all your videos were already filmed, right? It was just a matter of getting them up to the site and how that would all work. So many people run into those types of barriers and then I'll just stop. You know, they'll just be like, it's too hard, or they'll put it aside and not run through it. And what I really like about what you're talking about, Teresa, is you reached out for help. At some point, you're trading time for money. You could be creating more kits and more videos in the time that you're spending trying to figure it out. So you reached out, got help, and I'm sure that's been a lifesaver, not just for the videos, but anything else with your website now. Yes, definitely a lifesaver. And she's got like life rafts on her (laughs) all over her her website. So, I mean, it it is. It's a lifesaver. I couldn't do it. I mean, I maybe could, but it would take me way more time and waste my time. Exactly. Yeah. Better off in their hands. They can do a better job. Well, and you know you get that done right, and then you can move on, like I said, to other things, making new kits, whatever it is that is a profit-generating activity you know, you're the talent, you're the person behind it versus trying to figure out all the website stuff. Exactly. I love that you brought that up and gift biz listeners think about that. You know, are you trying to build something and you're stuck in one portion? Maybe it's time to reach out and get some expert help instead of 
trying to get it through and get the solution done that may or may not work and then you have to repeat it over and over again. So yes, you're spending a little bit of money as you're growing your business or building whatever you're doing, but in the end it can be worth it because it's done right and you can be focusing on other stuff to advance your business further, faster. Okay, Teresa, tell us about a challenging time along the way, something that you really struggled with over and above now the videos, <laughs> but something else that was a hurdle that could possibly stop people, but you know, you were able to jump over and make it work. So trying to do everything myself has been my biggest struggle. There's a lot of things behind the scenes that have to go on, such as assembling the kits and dyeing the wool and spinning and felting and just keeping track of the social media and well, preparing meals for my family and the homeschooling and designing kits. And then there's the sheep and lambing time. <laughs> and just keeping track of inventory has been a challenge and just keeping the house clean and laundry. Trying to balance it all has been the biggest and wanting to do it all myself and thinking I'm the only one that can do it. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm already um, exhausted uh, by <laughs> what you just said. <laughs> So what are you doing? How are you tackling it all in a way where you can stay sane? My family is helping out. I'm letting go of certain things, training them to, to help me. My husband has been very supportive and willing to learn things. He's taking over the dyeing of the wool when he has time. He helps me with the shipping, generally just going down there and taking care of that. I haven't let go of putting the kits together yet. <laughs> And my daughter, when she was home, she's gone to college now, but she used to cook all our meals, which was amazing. Now I've turned to freezer meals that I do like once and then they're, we're good for two weeks. That's a good tip though. Mm -hmm. But the boys help and my husband and then along with the ultimate WordPress help has been another big thing. So I've been listening to a book by Chris Ducker, Virtual Freedom. Mm -hmm. That's been putting the idea of virtual assistance into my head, but I'm not exactly sure yet. I'm halfway through the book, so I don't know exactly where they can help me, but it's kind of exciting to think that they maybe could. Well, I think they could. And while, since you've mentioned the book, I follow Chris Ducker too. You know, he has a whole virtual assistant staffing company mm -hmm. and I have used virtual assistants before. So um, mostly from the Philippines, which is where he is. If you have tasks that are routine, that don't need someone right there on the premises and it's something that someone could follow step by step by step, it's definitely something to look into, you know, down the road, not now necessarily, but down mm -hmm. the road. So I'm just going to jump right in here and remind Gift Biz listeners, just like you're listening to us here today, you can also listen to audiobooks like Virtual Freedom really easily. I've teamed up with Audible, and if you haven't already, you can jump over to giftbizbook.com and make a selection for a book for free on me. I want to jump back now to your story. You ha now have experience on eBay and Etsy. What would you say about either of those in contrast with each other or one that you feel is better serving you or just any feedback here? Because I know both of these sites would be of interest to our listeners. Well, eBay was definitely exciting as far as watching the bids come in <laughs> as a family. We, we just thought that was thrilling. And just the potential to see them go up maybe then higher than what you would charge. Where Etsy is just a constant presence where now that I have customers that come back and they want to know where I am, they want to be able to find me at all times. And that's where the Etsy shop has really been good. Are you using them both right now? I'm No, I'm using Etsy Okay, and my website. Okay, and yeah. why did you decide to eliminate eBay? I'm comfortable with Etsy and how it works. And I put them on there and I'm done. My shop is always open, always set up. Are you doing any Etsy ads? I have been doing Google ads through Etsy. Through Etsy's platform? Yes. Can you explain a little bit how that works? You just put in how much you would like to spend per day, and it goes out in the Google ads. I mean, you pick which products you would want to have advertised, and you're supposed to give it a month. It'll take that long to get a good response to the ads. Mm -hmm. And I have seen a good, and I started that before Christmas, and I've been really happy with how it's turned out. That's great input. Thank you. And, it's, and it sounds like it's pretty clear cut and easy. You give them the specifics about what you need for your business. 
probably target market a little bit, that type of thing. And then they just take it away from there. Yes. And the bill, I mean, it's just subtracted from your Etsy account. So you hardly even notice, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, that you're being charged because you're having that extra income as well. Sure. And that'll build over time. I mean, if you're already seeing results, then you hit the right target and it'll just keep growing and building. Yes. All right. And give biz listeners also remember you need to invest in your business. You know, you can't just put a website up and expect people to come find you. Once you've got your website up, the next step is you have to tell people that you're there. So Etsy's a great platform for that, as Teresa's just described. Okay, so we've talked a little bit about your promotion in terms of online. Let's talk about the shows. Sure. What do you look for in a show? Because for you, now you were here in Chicago, so you had some travel and all that. How do you determine what shows you'll go to? Well, we've tried several shows, local shows, and we've done fiber festivals farther away from here. And overall, the one-of-a-kind show where it's focusing on art has been our best show. We get the most people see our products. Um, We get to interact with the most people. It's probably a lot of money to invest for us, but it's definitely been worthwhile. The fiber festivals that I've gone to, it seems like the people are, they've already into knitting and they don't want another craft um, to add to their pile of crafts. Yeah, I just haven't done as well at the, as those as I have at the, at the art kinds, like one of a kind show. Well, and the one of a kind is perfectly timed too, because it's right before Christmas. Yes, it is perfect. (laughs) You're picking up some sales directly that way too. Are you focusing on one side of the business more than another, like selling the sculptures versus selling the kits? I don't know that I'm focused either way. The nice thing at the one of a kind show is the different price points. My sculptures run a little higher where the kits are like around $20, $30. And so I sell a lot of kits there. And I also sell a lot of snowmen, which are around the $60 price range. And then, you know, the higher price range on my sculptures. So it all evens out. And then once you attract someone in as a customer, how do you stay in touch with them or continue communicating with them? Or I guess I should start with do you? I do. I send out an email newsletter at least once a month, sometimes twice. I interact with them on social media. I'm active on Pinterest and Facebook and Instagram, and I recognize a lot of them on there as well. Okay, and what types of things do you put in your newsletters? I put the new things that I'm making. I often share works in progress, so there's a lot of people that are following or interested in what I do, and they want to know how I'm making these sculptures. And so I try to have what they look like when they're beginning, and then I'll just show the steps I share that on social media, and then I always put a a blog post together and share that in the newsletters. I um, share where I'm doing classes, anything new that I've made, and and new kits that are coming, and I also do giveaways. Oh, wonderful. And talk to us a little more about the giveaways. Every once in a while, I do a, a snowman giveaway, one of my sculptures, the snowman, or I give away kits. And is that then a way for you to attract more people to your email list? Um. Or you're just doing it to recognize people who are already on the email list. Exactly. Yes. To, to reward them for, to, for following me and, and staying in touch. And I would imagine, too, that when someone gets a kit maybe for the first time and they start trying it, that's a really vulnerable part of your customer onboarding, if you will, because you want them to be successful with that first kit so that they'll buy more. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't want them to get to a point where they're challenged with something and then they just put it aside and forget about it. Your emails allow them, number one, they're reminded of you when they get the email and then tips and seeing how progression goes with, with a kit. Maybe it's not the one that they have, but, you know, a similar type thing could reinforce the process if for some reason they were struggling with something. Yes. I also put together posts quite often about different techniques that I use. And so it's like in detail how at the mistakes I've made or what you can do if you make a mistake. Or, and I also include those in the newsletters to try and help them if they're trying to progress in their needle felting. Do you have a customer story that you could pull out in terms of a fun customer experience with them using your product? I teach classes and, it's, and my sheep... It's like a little fluffy sheep with curly wool on it. And that has been my 
favorite class to teach, and they're always so amazed that they actually made it, and it actually looks like a sheep. <laughs> and it's just fun to, <laughs> it's fun to hear them exclaiming over and talking to it as they're making it and just exclaiming how cute it is. And yeah, that, that really makes me happy. Oh, that's so cute. They talk to it as they're, as they're remaking it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I have to admit I do it too. Well, if you've given them their personality and their face, you, you can't help it. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Explain a little bit about how the classes started. So you had the idea and now you're doing the physical classes. Are they right in your area all the time? Uh, usually in my community, yes. Mm -hmm. And so where's the location? I just go where they want me. So there is like groups that will have me come to their town and I'll do that. I would like to have people come here. I just don't have the space yet or I haven't found a space. Also throwing around ideas of retreats, felting retreats, because there's been interest from all over the country in learning how to needle felt from me. And I don't know when I'm ever going to get to their state. <laughs> but yeah, a retreat would be excellent way. Talk a little bit about what you've learned in terms of doing successful classes, you know, how you sign people up and then actually the course of the class, like the course of the time that people are in there, you know, and how you teach them to do this. What can you share with us on that? Well, I've learned a lot in like when people are interested in purchasing my kits, I can tell them exactly how long it takes like a beginner or I learned things from teaching them how to go back and rewrite some of the things in my kits because I realize what they're struggling with and I've learned a lot that way just to be there when they're doing it and see what maybe they don't understand or what I need to explain better. It's been very valuable in writing out the instructions for the kits for me. Right. So you're getting insight from them because you're actually watching them try and do what you've put together. Yes. See where they get stuck. Yeah. Customer research, I guess you could call it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so have you had any issues in the class where someone's just been really challenged and not able to do something or any struggles in the classroom environment? Well, there was a time where I was asked to do it at a, a nursing home. And I was excited to do that because I thought, well, I would love that when someday when I'm in a nursing home. <laughs> and, yeah. But the struggle there was it takes a lot of physical energy to keep stabbing the wool with the needle. And I never realized that they would get tired. <laughs> and uh. so I had 19 people and I ended up making 19 sheep that night oh, because, no. <laughs> because they kept looking at me, can you do it? You know, because they were tired oh. and they didn't want to do it. And, and I, and I didn't, you know, I wanted them to have fun. So I tried to go around and, and yeah, I pretty much made 19 sheep. That could be a good dual thing if someone's in a senior home and has a relative, you know, yes. like they, a buddy system, because I'm sure they adore those sheep now, mm -hmm. you know, having them all. They were pleased with how they turned out. They were happy. I bet they had the expert making them. <laughs> yeah. well, and, they, and it was like at bedtime even. It was like at late in the evening and some of them were falling asleep. And if I were to do that all over again, I think I would make it easier or I would have stuff done before I got there. Or like you said, have helpers for each of them. That would definitely be the way to go. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But I could see where they would just cherish them because they're so cute. Gift Biz listeners, you have to look at them. <laughs> <laughs> Teresa, we're going to emerge now into our reflection section and talk a little bit more about you as a person and how you've been successful. Is there a natural trait that you call upon as you're going through your business day? I would say just determination. I'm pretty determined. Once I decide I want to do something, I stick with it until it's done. Certainly the trait of a successful entrepreneur, finding a resource, as we were talking about with WordPress earlier, or doing you know whatever you need to do to be able to move the ball forward. And is there, besides your pre-cooking two weeks of meals, is there any other tool or some other trick that you have to try and keep balance in your life? I mean, you are more challenged because you are working right out of home. You're homeschooling. You've got the animals to take care of. Is there anything that helps you balance all of this? Well, that's still a work in progress. But lately, I've um, started a bullet journal. I don't know if you're familiar with them, but day planners and things that are already made up have not worked for me. And so a bullet journal, I'm putting my calendar in there. I draw it in there the way I want. 
each page is blank for me to put down anything that I need in there. So if I have a blog post idea, every day I'll put the date and I'll put what I want to accomplish. If I have a kid idea, it's my books right there. I keep track of books that I'm reading and, you know, favorites and homeschool ideas. It's in this bullet journal. Beautiful. And give his listeners, if you don't know what a bullet journal is, I only ran into them in terms of the concept probably like six months ago or so, and they are so popular, they were sold out. (laughs) But the bullet journal, just like what Teresa is describing, isn't all structured for you already. But it is, do you have have like colors and designs and all of that since you're artsy in your journal as well? I do, Do, because it's it's kind of a stress reliever. I kind of look forward to being able to write in there because it's just something different. I like to make it pretty. So, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So it's a structure of being able to create your day and they do have physical journals that go along with it. It's a real thing. It's just not a concept. It's a real thing. And I'll link to the bullet journal, you know, an article or something like that in the show notes so you can see what we're talking about. Okay, we have talked about the Virtual Freedom book. Is there anything else you want to add in terms of any other books that you are reading or have read or listened to that you think our listeners could find value in? Total Money Makeover by Dave Ramsey has pretty much changed our lives as a family, especially with this income that's been increasing every year and just being able to manage our money wisely has been wonderful and changed our lives. All right, Teresa, at this point, I want to invite you to Dare to Dream. I'd like to present you with a virtual gift. It's a magical box containing unlimited possibilities for your future. So this is your dream or your goal of almost unreachable heights that you would wish to obtain. Please accept this gift and open it in our presence. What is inside your box? Well, there's two things in my box. First would be that our family would be financially secure enough to be able to give back, like give to people in need, to volunteer in our community and church where now we don't feel like we have the time, we're still working on debt, we're still in the growing process where I would just love to see that we're able to take the time to volunteer and that would just bring us so much joy. The second is a little more selfish. I would like to get my business out of my house. It's, it's taken over my whole house. There's wool everywhere. I'm taking up half the basement, moved the family room over. Kids are sitting right in front of the TV just to have space to put my kids together. And for all the wool and things that I need, I would just like a studio space that was separate so that I could have my house back. And I would like it to be where people could come and we could have classes. It would be big enough so that I could teach others. And there's so many that would love to come to my farm and see the sheep. And that would be part of coming and and learning from me. That would be awesome. Yeah, it would be a whole experience, right? Yes. Yes. I love that. And I, you know, one of the reasons I like asking this question is I like putting people's goals and dreams out in the environment because something tells me with the whole secret thing and power of attraction that it helps people get what they're dreaming of. You know, it just seems like you're walking that path right into exactly what you want. You've got all the services you want to provide. It's just you need that physical place. Yes. It's very exciting. Gift Biz listeners, you know that there's going to be a show notes page. And on that page will be all the information, contacts to Teresa's website, social media sites, all of that. You have to go look at these sculptures. They're so cute. If you need a smile in your day, like Teresa was talking about way in the beginning, all you need to do is go on the website and look at these adorable little animals. Teresa, for people who are not near a computer right now, maybe on their phones or walking their dogs at the gym, straightening stock in their shop, something like that, what would be the single best place for someone to go and connect up with you online? BearCreekFelting.com is my website. From there, you can find my Etsy shop. You can find my Facebook, Etsy, Instagram, uh, Pinterest. You can also find pictures of my sheep and our farm life as well as all of my sculptures that I've made and information on needle felting. Perfect. Well, I have to tell you, Teresa, I live in the suburbs of Chicago, but I swear in my past life, I grew up on a farm because (laughs) 
I always like not being in the city, but being more out nature, animals, all of that. So your life to me sounds absolutely fabulous. And I love the fact that you have the opportunity in this day to be able to make these adorable creations and sell them online and make a whole business for yourself. And your story about being able to go step by step by step and just one thing led to another led to another and the dreams that you have for your future, there is no question in my mind that all of those things are going to happen. Thank you again so much for joining me today and may your candle always burn bright. Thank you. I enjoyed it. Where are you in your business building journey? Whether you're just starting out or already running a business and you want to know you're set up for success, find out by taking the gift biz quiz. Access the quiz from your computer at bit.ly slash giftbizquiz or from your phone by texting giftbizquiz to 44222. Thanks for listening and be sure to join us for the next episode. Today's show is sponsored by the Ribbon Print Company. Looking for a new income source for your gift business? Customization is more popular now than ever. Brand your products with your logo or print a happy birthday Jessica ribbon to add to a gift right at checkout. It's all done right in your shop or craft studio in seconds. Check out the ribbonprintcompany.com for more information. After you listen to the show, if you like what you're hearing, make sure to jump over and subscribe to the show on iTunes. That way you'll automatically get the newest episodes when they go live. And thank you to those who have already left a rating and review. By subscribing, rating, and reviewing, you help to increase the visibility of Gift Biz Unwrapped. It's a great way to pay it forward to help others with their entrepreneurial journey as well.